after every few years of continuous operation, ships, hulking feats of mechanical engineering as they are, will eventually need to undergo maintenance in dry dock. This is because there are certain areas in the ship which are inaccessible or just can't be shut down safely without going to the shipyard. Today, we'll take a look at a few of the jobs that we did during our first few days that our ship was in dry dock. Our ship went on dry dock at Tuzla in Turkey. The facility was a floating dry dock, which is basically a huge U-shaped barge, which can submerge and slip underneath a ship and then refloat, ending up with a ship supported on blocks arranged all throughout the deck of the floating dock. Our ship has been dry for the past five days, and the sandblasting for the areas below the waterline is nearly done. The stern tube and shaft drop was already inspected and measured. The sea chest will be cleaned, and soon the primer will be applied on the hull. And after that, fresh coats of anti-fouling paint. And finally, polishing the propeller. On top of all that, we also have a few other items which we needed to attend to. So I'm here with the outgoing chief engineer. So I'm going to relieve him. We're headed to the shore workshop to inspect the generator turbochargers. The workshop was a short drive away from the shipyard. A welcome break from all the noise and busy atmosphere of the dry dock. This is the workshop for the electric motors. So we're here to inspect we just ordered it for overall and placement of bearings and lamination and baking. We have sent a few of our big electric motors to the shop for overhauling. Some of them had to be rewound and get freshly laminated. We went there to check up on the progress and make sure everything was done properly. So we're here right now at the workshop for the generator turbochargers, which we sent here for balancing and inspection of internal parts. We need to renew some of the parts here. We need to change it to a different type, but we don't have the parts yet. We're going to order it. But for now, it's still good to use. These were the turbochargers for our generators. Normally, the engine team can do the overhaul while the ship is running, but in this instance, we send it here for the periodic balancing, which requires specialized equipment, which the ship doesn't normally have. According to the previous chief engineer, these turbochargers were recently overhauled by the engine team, so we were sure that they are in quite good condition. After checking the workshop, we headed back to the shipyard. On our walk back to our ship, I couldn't help but notice and appreciate the magnitude of the operations carried out in this yard each and every day. On our ship alone, dozens of workers are scattered around the various areas of the ship, each of them assigned different tasks with varying degrees of expertise. On deck, fabrication of stoppers for the cargo hold hatch covers is in progress. As soon as the pieces have been cut to shape, they are immediately welded into place. As soon as the sandblasting for the hull was completed, 
the paint primer was ready to be applied. Okay, so we're still here at the dry dock and we're scheduled to be here for about three days more, I think, before we finally set sail for the loading port. There's still a lot of things to do and yeah, it's still gonna be a busy day today. The next few days were just a continuation of the previous one. Work was ongoing, and we all did our part. There were many other ships alongside ours undergoing dry dock, each in various stages of progress, but all aiming for the same thing, which is to get their ships back into optimal working condition. Next up for us is the lowering of the anchor in the chains. Once they are laid down, the chain links will be inspected and measured. Our cargo holds were also given fresh coats of paint. Once the curing process is done, they will be ready to receive cargo in the upcoming voyages. The deck team is also engaged in various tasks. In this instance, reinstalling the various attachments to the cargo hatch. The engine team also has their share of repairs to do, not only in the engine room, but with the deck machinery as well. So I'm here right now in the engine room, the engine control room, actually. Everything is quite a mess here in the control room and also outside in the engine room. Let's go take a look. Since the ship was not submerged, and electric power is applied from the shore. Almost all of the systems and pipelines were on shutdown, which means it's the perfect time to do repairs on them, which normally isn't possible once the ship is back on the water and when the ship's generators are already running. Number one priority is of course given to the seawater pipeline and all of its attachments, especially the valves. After a few years of operation, there will of course be a tendency for these pipes to be heavily affected by corrosion and for the valves to suffer mechanical damage. Some of the segments in these lines are nearly impossible to repair once the ship is refloated and if damaged, could even create a critical situation in severe instances. which is why repairing them and making sure that everything works as they should is of the utmost importance. It's also a good time to make repairs on the steam line, since the boiler was also on shutdown. In this instance, the engine team easily made repairs on our plate-type jacket water preheater. There were a lot of other jobs that were done, but of course, I couldn't possibly cover all of them. Suffice to say, dry docking is a very demanding task, and one which has to be done as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And as soon as the last of the jobs have been completed, it will be time for the ship to prepare and leave the yard.